Welcome everyone to this video on procrastination. How many of you have procrastinated before? I'm sure you, like me, have. This is for you if procrastination is a problem for you. Maybe you're procrastinating about writing that quote or writing that proposal that you know that you need to do in order to get that business or making that phone call or or putting up that advert or writing your blog. There's something in your life that you're procrastinating about. This is a great opportunity to find out one, why are you procrastinating? What is it that's holding you back? And two, find a way to move forward so that you're no longer procrastinating. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you need to know that procrastination is a very long word for fear. Behind 99.9% .9 of all procrastination is fear. Fear that you're not good enough, fear that you're not going to make it, fear that something is going to happen. Some kind of fear is behind that. We're not going to be talking about rational fears. These are not rational fears. There's only one rational fear when your life is in danger. That is a rational fear. All the others are irrational and you can just bend them. You don't need them. But how? Because they're still fears, they're still there and they feel real to you, right? We're going to do something, a couple of things here that can help you. So what you need is that thing that you're procrastinating on that advert that you're wanting to put out, that blog you're wanting to write, those phone calls that you're wanting to make. What, it, what is it that you're procrastinating about? Today, we're gonna to just have an example that we're procrastinating on writing a proposal. Okay, there's a proposal. Let's say, call it a quote, just because it's easier to say quote than proposal, nice short word. Okay, so I'm procrastinating about writing a quote. What I, I do, the first thing that you can do is find out what is that fear behind it. And this, there are seven irrational fears behind anything. The first is fear of authority. I'm going to get in trouble if I do this. I'm going to lose my license if I'm going to do this. Someone's going to tell me I can't do it. And remember, fears are not necessarily logical. So you may logically know that you're not doing anything wrong, but behind there's that little voice that thinks, saying, you're gonna get in trouble. You're not doing it well enough. There's, there's something and some authority is gonna tell you off. So the first one, fear of authority. Number two, fear of failure. And what goes in hand in hand with that is fear of success. If I write this quote and I send it off, I'm scared it's going to be rejected. That's failure. Or it's going to be accepted. Now I've got fear of success. Now I've got to carry through and fulfill my promises. What if I can't fulfill my promises? So there's number two is fear of failure or fear of success. So you could have one or other or both. Number three is I don't know enough. That's a very common one. I don't know enough in order to write this quote. I don't know all the background information. I don't know all the scientific information. I haven't studied. I haven't got a qualification. I don't know. Very common. Number four, I won't make money doing this. I'm writing this quote. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll want it, but they won't want to pay money for it. I'll get free clients. People, I'm quite easy. I'm able to get the free ones, but nobody wants to pay. The fear number four, I won't make money. Number five, Losing respect of a loved one. You're getting into this healing area. It's new to you and you're doing all this. And if you share all this information with them, this might not be a quote, this might be something else. They won't think as highly of you. They thought that you were better than this and this is just woo-woo stuff. Like losing respect of a loved one. And hand in that hand with that is rejection by society. Society just puts you as a like a woo-woo person or a like a witch or a like funny person, but they don't really respect you. So you are rejected by society. And number seven is your health. 
by doing this, maybe this thing that you're putting into your quote, is you haven't got the energy for it. You're going to lose sleepless nights. It's going to take so much work. It's going to take so much out of you. You're going to be so, there's something within your physical health that is going to suffer. So quickly, those seven irrational fears. Fear of authority. Fear of failure or success. Not knowing enough. I won't make money. Losing respect of a loved one, being rejected by society, and your health. So the first thing that you can do is write down what is it that you're procrastinating about? I'm procrastinating about putting that advert out there. I'm procrastinating about writing my blog. I'm procrastinating about writing a quote. I'm procrastinating about doing my books. What is it that you're procrastinating about? Write that down and I encourage you to get pen and paper and handwrite it. Not typing it, handwriting it is the most powerful way. Write out what it is that you are procrastinating about. Then once you've done that, work out what is the fear behind that? Is why am I not doing this thing? Why am I not writing this quote? Do I have a fear of authority? No, no, I don't have a fear of authority. Fear of failure or fear of success? Yes, I actually do. I'm scared they're going to reject it. Or maybe not. Fear I don't know enough. Fear I won't make money. I will lose respect of a loved one. I'll be rejected by society. Or something to do with your health. Work out which one it is you may or may not know. Then, number one, write out, if you do this thing that you're procrastinating about, what is the worst thing that can happen? Write that out. This is the worst thing that can happen. They will reject it. They will ignore me. They will send it back. They will say it's too expensive. They will want me to rewrite the whole thing. What is the, what is the worst that can happen? And then, Underneath that, what is the best thing that can happen? They accept it and they want me to go ahead tomorrow. Or the best thing is they accept it and they want it next month so that gives me time to prepare. What is the worst thing that can happen and what is the best? Once you figure that out, chances are the worst thing that can happen, you're in the same position. They said no. Well, you didn't have their business before, you don't have their business now. They want you to rewrite it. Well, you didn't have their business before, you still don't have their business. The chances are you're just in the same position. That in itself helps. What is the best thing can happen? Suddenly you're excited about the possibility. So just by writing the worst thing and the best thing can help motivate you. So if that helps you, go ahead and do that now. If you're still stuck, I've got another little tool that a lot of you may know, tapping. If you don't, you can go to my intro to tapping video. Otherwise, just follow along with me. You can tap out your procrastination and this is the best place to do it. So you have your procrastination. You know what you're procrastinating about. You've got it with you. Have it written down. This is what I'm procrastinating about. What I'm tapping on may be completely different to what you're tapping on. That's fine. You can still use my words with this in mind. It'll still have an effect. The first thing to do is rate it. Like I'm procrastinating on writing this quote or making this phone call or sending out this email or this newsletter or writing my newsletter. On a scale of zero to 10, 10 being like, this, I've put this off for like three years. I'm just like, I just do not want to do it. And one or two is like, yeah, I'm kind of procrastinating. I suppose I can probably force myself to do it. So roughly where are you below? Probably you know you're below five or about five, how much you're procrastinating. Write that number down. That's a seven. And now tap with me. You're just my mirror. So tapping along the points on the karate chop first. Even though I'm procrastinating about writing this quote, 
I choose to completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though I'm procrastinating about writing this quote, because I'm really scared they're going to reject it. That it's just not going to be good enough and they're not going to like the price. I choose to accept myself anyway. Even though I've got this, I'm procrastinating about writing this quote because I'm really scared of failure and I'm scared that they're going to reject it. I choose to completely love and accept myself anyway. Learn your points. I'm procrastinating about writing this quote. And you can do one side, you don't have to tap both together. Doesn't matter which side. I'm procrastinating about writing this quote. I'm really scared that they're going to reject it. I'm procrastinating about this quote. I'm actually really ashamed that I haven't done it. Part of me feels that I'm not ready. Part of me is really nervous. Part of me is really scared and nervous. I'm tapping under your arm. I'm procrastinating about writing this quote. I'm scared that I'm going to fail. I'm scared they're going to reject me. I'm scared I'm going to put all that effort in and then they're going to say no. It'll be like all that effort for nothing. All that effort for a no. And I really don't want that. But what if they do accept it? I wonder if there are other possibilities. What if I send it and they say, yes, this is good? What if there are just a few corrections, a few modifications? What if they accept this quote and want more from me? That would be amazing. That would make me feel fantastic. I would be so excited. I would love that. But right now it doesn't feel possible. It just feels really scary. Because what if they reject me? Why do they say no? I guess I'll just be where I am now. And maybe I can learn from it. Maybe they might give me ideas of how to improve it if they reject it. Maybe I might come up with some myself. So maybe it won't be so bad they reject it. Maybe I can learn from it. After all, so many people out there had so many failures before their success. Look at the Wright brothers. How many times did they fail before they succeeded? Look at John Martini. He failed hundreds of times before he succeeded and now look how successful he is. I'm open to the possibility I can be successful. I'm open to the possibility that maybe they could accept it. Maybe this could be the start of new things. I choose to let it be easy. I choose to relax and just let it be easy. Even if I'm scared of failure, I choose to relax and let it be easy. As you tap on your collarbone, taking a deep breath. And you should have water by you. If you do, have some now. Otherwise, when we finish here, go and have some water. That helps flush the toxins through. See how you feel. Have a look at what it is you're procrastinating about. See how much you want to do it. 10 is like, no way. One or two is like, oh, I'm going to do it now. 
You may want to go through this a couple of times. Tap, tap exactly the same thing, even if it's if your procrastination is not a proposal or a quote or anything like that. You can still use these words or replace them with what yours, yours are. Just tap a couple of rounds. Do this every day for the next week, the next week to 10 days. And chances are, every time you procrastinate about doing this, come and tap this. It's right there in front of you. You don't have to do anything except follow along. If you want to learn how to do this yourself for your own specific needs, I'll post a link below of a tapping template specifically for procrastination that you can use yourself for anything that you're procrastinating about. After all, when you're procrastinating, you tend to go and do other things. This is a great thing to be that for the thing to procrastinate about. Do it, tap it, and before you know, you won't be procrastinating anymore. And please comment, I would love to hear how this goes for you. Enjoy and happy tapping.